you took it though? Is it Friday? Is that true? Yeah, it was a Sunday. Is it really true? Yeah, I don't mess around, you know. <laughs> I just need a lot of rest time, a lot of prep time. Like messing around like this. But when it's rock and roll time, then that's what it is. It took longer than it took to make the paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's clever. Those little foot stoppers. Yeah. And I, I used there. to use, oh, maybe I put those on myself. Over there. Yeah. yeah. That was clever. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, that was an unconscious compliment to myself. <laughs> So I think we can I think I think we can forgive me that one. <laughs> I know it ended up in my own lap, but it <laughs> wasn't directed at me. Yeah, we can turn off all cell phones. For when we go to the cinema we have to turn off our cell phones. <laughs> Both sides are the best side on you. Oh, oh good answer. <laughs> but me, I've only got one good side. It's okay, good answer. <laughs> I can do Let's some do karate for you. <laughs> tai Chi? Yeah. yeah tai, chi. tai Chi, that's what it looked like, right? <laughs> I don't know anything about Tai Chi, but that's kind of what I'm having some issues with her. Oh, okay. No, sorry. <laughs> right. In the fruits and vegetables <laughs> section. Show tunes. Show tunes. Um, so it's October 26, 2006, and I'm here talking with Sean Scully about No Neo from 1984. Um, I wanted to ask you, starting off, uh, I wanted to ask you about the title. Yeah, well, the title is. Um, is a title that was made at a time at when it was the beginning of Neo Geo and it was the end of the beginning <laughs> of Neo Expressionism and I was a little bit sick and tired of the word Neo so I called it No Neo as a act of defiance. Right, so it's an affront it's an affront, yes, and, I hope. And the idea of Neo is really important to you because you, you named your studio, in a sense, Neo Neo. Is, is that...? Well, it was a coincidence because at the time <laughs> I became um, incorporated. Uh -huh. And the guy who was searching for a title gave me a long spiel as they do about everything in New York, even doorknobs. What, what should be the title of it? And t he gave me all the possible ways of thinking about it. And of course, I was ready at the beginning because I'd just finished this painting. And when he'd r run out of gas and he pulled over for a rest, I said, Neo, Neo. Meaning? meaning nobody else will have thought of that name. Right. So it, we won't have to mess around. <laughs> and that's the name of my corporate right. tax status. Right, Neo right, Neo. Right. Inc. Right. And this was no Neo. So the, actually the other was the opposite because the opposite was affirming the idea of Neo. And this is contradicting it. Right. Resisting it. I want to go back to the idea of an affront and a kind of 
uh, something that's quite um, in your in your space because these multi-panel works that you were doing then, these one of the first to emerge. Yeah. Um, it, it's really an important moment for you. 1984. Yeah. Well. What happened was that I, I moved into a loft on Duane Street. And the loft, 110 Duane Street. And the loft was full of shelves. And it was a beautiful dark space that was a textile warehouse. And of course, the previous tenants took all the textiles, but they left me with the work of disassembling all the shelves, naturally. So we took all the shelves down and built the loft with the verticals. And the horizontals were beautiful pieces of pine wood that you could never get now. And they had been dried for 30 or 40 years in this place. And they're red. I cleaned them all up and I stood them against the wall. Made a very interesting sculpture because it looked like a three-dimensional striped sculpture. So I passed this thing on a daily basis, of course. It was in the end of the studio. And um, when I went out to the Edward Albee retreat for a month, I didn't take any canvases. I just picked up pieces of wood that were out there and bolted them together and screwed them together. And that was how I made the corner paintings. The first corner painting, called Solomon, black and white painting, was a long piece of wood that I painted vertical stripes and I thought that it was actually too long. So I cut some off and then, not wanting to waste my effort, I simply laminated the bit that I'd cut off on top of the other one. So the painting went along and went back and went along. Then I got the idea to use all these boards that were in the studio and four of them are in there. Huh. So this is a stretcher that was made by me. I just chopped and screwed and glued one, to make these one deep stretcher boxes. Or just the one, yeah. The others are, are not as deep. Yeah. So they were made out of regular pieces of wood that I had lying around. And this what are three stretchers? Yeah, there's three. Uh, well, actually, there's four, but one is of no consequence because it's painted over. And what I was thinking about was how to make a painting that had the force and the emotion, the f but the physical force, of a painting by Van Gogh. But now. Interesting, because... I was going to ask you about the yellow. Yeah. Van Gogh. Yeah, Van And the blue. Yeah, Van actually. Gogh was a master of yellow. And the blue is a color that I don't really have in any of my other paintings. And I painted the picture, as I told you, very fast. And that yellow is made by painting uh, white or nearly white, cream color over yellow ochre. And it picks up a lot of the color underneath and that produces this. The white is over the ochre? Yeah. Or the o okay. Yeah, you see in the seam, yeah. there's the ochre. Yeah. So when I paint oh, right. over, that makes the color. The color from yeah, underneath yeah. makes the color. When uh, you look at the edges, you can see how it was made. When yeah. you look at the middle, you can't, it's harder to read. That's. Yeah. It's all in the edges. Yeah, it's all in the edges. And these edges are, there's so much tension in them because they're not, they're, they're very different edges for you, I find. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're not straight. Yeah. And c I wondered if you could talk about that. It, uh, they're almost, to me, because they're not perfectly straight, they read as these wobbly figures. Yeah, the, I was thinking about figures. These and, two. Yeah, I was thinking about figures and trees, which are also figures, yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I wanted to animate the whole thing 
and work against the construction of the box. So it's as if I make a construction that has to be overwhelmed by the emotion of the painting. That was the idea. So they're really in a battle for supremacy. As are the two, you know, colors, in yeah. a way, the forward and back between right. the, you know, between the, the blue and the yellow. Yeah. And the blue was painted many times before I got to that darker blue. And I remember that it was, it was very bright and I kept trying to make it darker. <laughs> and eventually I got it so that it was darkened but very lively, is the way I would describe it. Right, well there's a light that comes through it yeah. in, in the blue and in the yellow. Right. Both. There's a lot of layered um, paint in which, through which the light kind of shines. Espe and also in that passage in the fleshier toned. That's how I finished the painting. So I remember I painted the blue and yellow first. I painted the body of it. And then I've, I painted that in the corner with, I, I would almost describe it as junk. Junk colors that I had. Maybe I had some of that some of that white cream color left and I bang that down on top of a, a red. It reads as flesh though. Yeah, that's right. It looks like, it's very associative. Yeah. And um, of course I wouldn't have left it if, it if it wasn't associative. That's built into the argument. Yeah. But um, when I'm making the paintings, even now, I work very fast. Not so, always the case? Earlier in your career, you were more deliberate? Well, when I was young, I was making these systematic paintings, you know, and they are made with bright colors, parrot colors, <laughs> I like to call them, <laughs> <laughs> or butterfly colors, okay. like your brooch. Okay. So I was making colors that um, were more received, and then as I as I went through my life and gathered more weight, emotional weight, the colors changed and they got to be moody. Somber. Somber. Sad. Sad, yeah. But this is not a sad painting. No, this is one of the most um, vital of the paintings. This is, a, this is a bright one. Almost exuberant. Yeah. Um, and they have this kind of swaying motion, particularly this one, um, has a, a kind of f falling, the lines are falling and wobbling around, like the lines on the left. I drew that, by the way, I drew those oxide color lines with an oil stick. And it was wonderful to be able to draw like that. That was at the time of of a, an art movement which lasted about a week that was called graffiti. <laughs> and one of, their, one of their finest inventions was <laughs> the invention of the oil, stick. the oil stick. And everybody wanted to paint with the oil stick. So I used it for drawing, which I did on several paintings from the 80s, like Angel, black lines drawn on one side, Angelina is another one. And then I painted around it with a kind of, looks like a, a dark, cold umber color. And then at a certain point, I obviously put this white color on it. But, and it's probable or possible that I repeated the use of the white in three places with different results because of what's underneath. And almost the, the, that amber, that er, oxide color as well, repeats yeah. over here in, yeah. in paint. From a different source. Yeah. 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 So this was bit. painted um, as a beautiful uh, um, red color, deep earth red, red ochre probably. And I 
put it, as you can see, I painted it very aggressive. And the light color is more like this, more wavy. And this is stroked heavy and, and stiller. And this, this one here is, is more agitated on the left. So there's kind of a surface story running through and it. As your, your works relate to other works, um, you know, around this time, certain colors are, are related as well. I'm thinking of Outback and the, the red yeah. color in that, that kind of earthy tone. Right. And then the fleshy tone in this relates to the painting of that name, Flesh also yeah. from 84, right? That's right. So are there others that you think of um, as relating to this painting when you look at No Neo? Yeah. Um, there are others, but I can't remember The them. bather? <laughs> no, the bather was more golden. The yeah. bather is, is, is very lit up in the central panel. The panel that represents the figure coming out. How about Murphy? Yeah, Murphy. Um, yeah, Murphy. I can remember quite well because I talked about it on Sunday at the Met. So that's a good one to ask okay, me about. Okay, I'm lucky. <laughs> I didn't know that. I lucked into that yeah. question. So Murphy has. But Murphy has a kind of a, a, a darker brown. S saturated. Yeah, a very heavy brown. Beautiful color brown, though. I really like that. And it's drawn out with uh, a white oil stick again. I was doing a lot of oil stick drawing okay. at that time. And uh, of course, the, the paintings, um, you know, uh, there was a painting called Heat. Yes. That has this color, too, sweeping across. This uh, red ochre, I was very fond of that color at the time. So heat, red earth, painted as a companion really to Outback. Mm -hmm. They all have this kind of color and then this pinky color too, pinky yellowy color yep. was in Outback. Thinking about Australia where I'd never been. Right. Imagining. I was imagining Australia. Right. To see how, how it would be without having to... Were you right? You've since been to Australia. Uh, yeah, I was right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It was very much like what I imagined. Taking the color from the ground, yellow ochre and red ochre, these earth colors, which I'm still very fond of, of course. So I'm always pushing the color down, which is sorrowful, and lifting it up, which is trying to, I suppose, redeem the situation, <laughs> <laughs> to salvage something from the sinking light. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm always in this fight. So my, my my feeling is, is, is falling, but my vitality is refusing to allow right. it. Right, succumb. So that keeps me painting, because it's always pulling and pushing. There's an in internal, external Yeah, there's tension. an engine there. Yeah. yeah. So there's the will and the, and the emotion. And it happens for you in paint with yeah. that tension in, in it. The thing about this painting in particular, No Neo, is that it was made as an act of aggression. And I had something to work against. Also, I would say that if I would make revisions on a painting, the painting generally gets sadder. So for me to make a painting like this, it needs to be made on a certain day in a certain way. Right. Making this a kind of important work. 
for you in that? Yeah, well, I talked about that on Sunday. There's paintings that I revise and there's paintings that I don't revise. And there's quite a difference. I'll give you another example. There's a painting in the Lembach House, very related to this, around a similar period called This, That, because there's this and there's that. <laughs> hence the title. <laughs> and the painting is a vertical one, and these are the most impractical, because as the painting goes up, it gets bigger, heavier, made again with all these boards from Duane Street. And I, I was making the painting on Duane Street, and it was red with black lines like this, drawn between with black oil stick. And when I when I thought I'd finished a painting, I, I went to move it, and I'm, I, I stood it on the floor, because this you can stand on the floor, because it's, it's big in the middle. I had considered, by the way, making, making freestanding paintings, freestanding paintings at this time. Almost did it. Why didn't you do it? I couldn't quite figure out how to do it. And I always had the idea that my mission was to put painting back in the middle of the argument. So I couldn't uh, allow myself Turn into to too get much distracted. of an object. Yeah, because then people would say, oh, it's sculpture. And I'm not interested in that conversation. So, anyway, this painting, this, that, which is deep like this at the bottom and deep like that at the top, it goes bigger as it goes up. I stood against the wall, I leaned it a little bit, but I miscalculated. And as I walked round from the left side of the painting to the right side of the painting, it fell on top of me. And I was in the position of, you know, Peter Sellers as an Inspector <laughs> Clouseau, trying to push the painting back like this, so, so, you know, Laurel and Hardy movie. And there I was, <laughs> you know, hurling insults at the painting, which the painting completely ignored. <laughs> and and f fell completely on top of me, so I was under the painting like this, trying to get out, being painted red. And by the time I exited <laughs> from under the painting, I was red. So. That's why the painting is yellow. Because <laughs> I'm not having that. All right, no more red. You, you could deal with yellow all over your... No, the, if it was yellow, no. I would have painted it red. <laughs> gotcha. right. Because I'm just not putting up with that kind of behavior right, right. from the painting. It was a punishment. Yeah, I said, all You're right, disciplining. Uh, you want to do that? <laughs> Fine. Now you see what happens next. Now you're going to be a yellow painting, and then you won't think it's so funny. <laughs> so I painted the painting yellow. That's Fantastic. what happens. Yeah. Well, thank goodness this didn't fall <laughs> down. Who knows what color it would have been. Well, it still would have been OK. It, it would have been, been OK. Yeah. It's just beautiful the way it is, though. Yeah. It really is. So that's how I did it. I made the middle, painted it down to there, and I was very, I remember I was very tired. I was almost exhausted by the time I got to that last corner. And I bashed that in, and it looked great. And that was that? No temptation it, to keep working on no, it? No, it was finished. Yeah. It has that kind of immediacy yeah. to it. That it's, yeah. that it's very active work and very fresh. And the other thing about the Van Gogh reference besides the yellow that you wanted to discuss, is that, well, his yellow, use of yellow, is in incredibly melancholic. It's a very similar state of mind to the one that I feel, I think, when I work a lot. Because it's naturally vibrant, so to make it almost ill, as he does, is really quite interesting, psychologically. But the thing that I wanted to do so much in these paintings in relation to Van Gogh was to make a painting where everything was a positive. 
not something on something else. I wanted to make a painting that was all, a, a, all positive and affirmative action. Thus, no neo. Right. It's standing on somebody else's shoulders, of course, but it's not a, a re Regurgitation. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. not ironic, you know. Right, words. right. Is there anything else you want to say about the work? That no, I think I'm finished now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. If everyone could just sit very quietly, with no moving and no speaking. And get the sound of the space that we're in. You're rolling that thing. This is room tone.